The Baptist Joint Committee has a long history of working with other groups to amplify our collective voice defending religious freedom for all. It doesn't matter that you all might disagree on other policy perspectives or issues. It doesn't matter that people come from different religious traditions or no religious tradition at all. What matters is that you are working together toward a common end. You'll come to the table and you'll start talking about what is your position on this, what are you doing about this, and then um, it sort of builds from there. Different groups have different contacts on the Hill. Some groups are stronger with the Democrats, some groups are stronger with the Republicans, and you start kind of putting together your strengths. By bringing in different perspectives, different contacts, different viewpoints, we're then able to marshal our forces together to have greater impact. We believe, as a minority faith tradition, um, that we're stronger together. So when we can find issues where we can find other partners, where we can speak with one voice, sometimes that is more effective. On a number of occasions, the BJC brought together folks on every side of the church-state religious freedom divide to try and figure out how we have common principles, what's the bridging ways that we can proceed, um, what are the areas of agreement? And that's been incredibly valuable, some of the best work that I think I've been involved in. For Know Your Neighbor, we have folks from the left and the right, from folks that are humanists to evangelicals, and the Baptist Joint Community was able to give us space to host these conversations. Their experience working with so many different organizations was critical to what we did, and critical to working with institutions like the White House. A lot of our work has to do with educating members of Congress. And the work that we do there is really done one-on-one -on -one in meetings in legislators' offices. Walking into a meeting with a broad coalition and you can see them sort of get that, you know, you can see in their eyes that they're looking at it differently when you leave is really one of the, the best feelings. We file briefs, often at the Supreme Court, to make a particular point. And while we want to speak as Baptists and from the Baptist Joint Committee's perspective, we sometimes join forces with coalition partners. When you have Muslims and Jews and Christians and atheists coming together on a brief, it can show the court that what you're arguing for is not a narrow perspective, but something that is really good for religious liberty for all. As we look and decide how to partner, uh, we don't look for groups where we share the same theological beliefs, but groups that have the same principles. When we're divided, um, then people don't hear us, we're fragmented. And so what we try to do is, wherever we can, unite with others so that we have a stronger collective voice. Nothing gets done in D.C. without working with other groups. It is more interesting and powerful to think, oh, these, diff these different groups, we think of them so as being very separate, having different viewpoints, and yet they all agree on this one particular issue. Often we think about how divided we are as a country, religiously and politically, but we can stand together for religious liberty for all. And coalition work helps us understand each other's perspectives and why we need to work together. When we see new threats to religious liberty arise, we don't know exactly where they'll come from, we don't know what they'll be. What we do know is that we will continue to work with our partners who share our commitment to extending religious freedom for all.